I love it. We are controlling our future. I'm happier now. Our customers are happier. We are now real time. It really works. The future is now. One of the key things that uh, was a challenge to Safaricom around 2008-2009 was um, we did, there was a lot of demand that was coming in from the customers, right? And there was a lot of demand that was also coming now being translated into the, from the commercial teams. So we had post-pay customers sitting on one system, we had pre-pay customers sitting on another system. The same set of services were not available to both sets of customers. If there were constraints in what we wanted to offer the customers, then of course we would lose money because we don't roll out products as fast as we should. And of course, every time the competitor asked for, I mean, came up with a different promotion, they'll look, up, they'll look and, find, and try to find out why is it that Safaricom cannot offer the same thing. What we were looking for was flexibility in the system in terms of speed to roll out services and managing uh, you know, our ongoing costs for developing new products. From the system perspective, you could see the, the products growing, you could see the customers growing, and you could see a lot of things changing in the process. But in terms of billing, this was very key, because this is where we get the money. This is where Safaricom does get its money from, in terms of products, whether it is voice, whether it is your ringback tone, whether it is your bonga. This is where money is at the end of the day. Now for us to be able to manage this, we started looking into what, where does the building evolve into, right? And what is it that we want to put specifically for Safaricom in that particular evolution path? And uh, in this case, we then said analyzing uh, and uh, looking at the specifications around the converged billing platform and the OCS, the online charging solution. We were tasked to find a platform where we could host both prepay and postpay customers and then we could just have customers. We planned for it. We didn't just wake up and decide we wanted another billing system. We took all the learnings we had from the two billing systems that we had in the past and, and talked to our customers and said, what do our customers want to see? So when we said we had to do it, Michael Joseph being Michael Joseph would always give you a deadline. We would give ourselves a deadline. So he says to us, how long do you think it will take you to do this? We said, mm, we think about 24 months. He said, no, you're going to do it in 12. And so Ken and I, our, our jaws dropped. The challenge for the team was, how do you deliver a project that would normally take 36 to 48 months in 15 months? You realize that it is people who are going to do these things. So uh, we needed to ensure that we had could buy in from the company and we needed to start from the top. So as much as the CEO did give us the timeline, we ensured that his, his direct reports who are the XCOM also had the, also give us the buy-in, meaning that we had blessings from the top. Secondly, we needed to manage the teams. So to do this, really, the team had to rethink project methodology. We came up with, uh, with the approach of dividing the teams into smaller teams. So we had a team that was just dealing with the PPA, uh, products, a team with the post products, a team in term dealing with connectivity, making sure that all our systems can connect and how do they connect back to existing systems. Then we also had to look at the migration aspects. We are going to migrate data from different systems. So it involves even coordination of vendors, some Portuguese, some Chinese, bring them together into rooms, making sure that they don't fight each other. The only place where this platform had been launched was in China. And as you know, China has a population of 1.3 billion people. The biggest telco in China is China Mobile with 800 million customers, the bulk of whom are prepaid. So of course they needed a robust system that they couldn't get from Europe because Europe again is predominantly postpaid. So they built an ingrown, homegrown solution. It was completely um, important to have a strong partner on this uh, project and we found that uh, partner in Huawei. So we sat down with the project manager from Huawei, uh, he's called Emilio. We actually planned 8 to 5 during the day and activities happening at night. The team got so good at doing its work to some point where uh, regression testing of all the components would happen in two days. It was intense in terms of people, intense in terms of information sharing, 
communication, making sure we get the user requirements, especially from the business team. What is it they want? Part of the support for management is that they understood this was a complex uh, project. So it needed a lot of careful implementation. Of course, there were restless nights. Guys leave the office at 4 a.m. and have a debrief with management at 8 a.m. and have to come in and continue with the work. So we did have instances where we had certain gaps. We had instances where certain things did not happen because of expectations not met. And uh, I can say it, it, it has taken us, it took us about one and a half to two months to quickly find out what are all the, what are all the gaps write them down, document them correctly, and then go through another cycle of ensuring that this is developed and onboarded onto the platform with minimum impact to the customer. All in all, when we look at the effort and the accomplishments that came from there, it was worth it. The new system came with very many new things, I would say, in terms of one, the product offering, the business process improvements, and the turnaround time that we take between the point of configuring a product and selling it to the market. We have been able to see at times when, when we don't have anything on the pipeline, we've been able to even achieve less than 48 hours in terms of turning around some, some of the products or initiatives that are required by the, by the commercial teams. It's just a small configuration for any of those products and you find, I mean, revenue assurance becoming much, much easier for you because the integration with your business intelligence systems is so, so simple. If it's a billing process, I mean, we have completed our billing cycle, that is maybe on a monthly basis. We are able to finalize everything within the first day of, of, of bill run. Bill run is where we are processing the bills for the customers. And like previously, where it could take even to seven days, now we are able to do it day one. If, you, if I look at myself as a customer, not just the person asking the customers to pay money, then if I get my bill on time, it's accurate. And if I have a query it is resolved on time, then I pay my bills on time. So one of the benefits of CBS was the way it has simplified the access of our products and services for all our customers. We have had a lot of firsts because of CBS. We have a system that mine customer behavior and, and allow us to send individual promotions to uh, uh, specific promotions to certain individuals. The agility of this system allows you to actually deliver services in record time. So uh, as people are thinking of how to do it, you're actually telling them this is already done. What I promise my, my customers is what I give them and I give them even more. Because we have so much flexibility, there's so much we are able to do. There's so much, um, can I say, even add-on products that we can give them that we didn't have the option of doing before. We've been able to extend roaming to our prepaid customers because of this real-time billing. So most of our prepaid customers, anywhere they go in the world, they're surprised when they turn on their Safaricom line and they find that they can roam. So it's brought a lot of convenience, a lot of control, and it has also helped us to be more transparent with our customers, because you know exactly what you're paying for and why you're paying for it. Unlike the previous platform, we had what we call geographical redundancy to make sure we try and have our business continuity compliance in terms of if there's a disaster. So all this was just to make sure that we can retain service irrespective of the circumstances that are there. I think a lot of companies fail to launch innovations because they are waiting until you know you're absolutely perfect. A lot of the times when you launch something, it's not perfect. But as the customer begins to use it and gives you feedback, you begin to tweak it, you, be, you begin to look for new opportunities. And for me, that has been the real thrill about being at Safaricom. So the future for me is we are going to go more into data. Right now we are already rating all our data as a basic through the billing platform. We intend now to add the content aspect, which is going to be added in the next one or two months, right? And then we'll now be able to have an ecosystem that allows us to monetize across the basic service all the way into the content that is now very, very, very specific to the consumer.